When shooting images, I want to tell a story. I want things to happen within the frame. And at the same time, the frame should not be cluttered, but neither should it be too empty. The primary focus should be on the mushroom or mushrooms, while the surrounding elements contribute to the overall storytelling. A good composition is key in creating good images. I take my time to find or even to construct a composition by incorporating multiple layers, supporting elements and a dreamy painterly background. Now, mushrooms often grow low to the ground, which can present some challenges when you want to include an interesting and pleasing background. I want something to happen in the background. I want some contrast, some color variation or some structural elements in the background. However, quite often you'll have a dull, uninteresting background and it's quite flat and boring. Sometimes a flat uniform background will just do fine, especially when you go for a minimalistic look, like in this image here. Or when the mushroom almost fills the whole frame. So, in some occasions, a clean simple background works just fine, but mostly I want something more and I want to tell a story. I want some more excitement within the frame. As photographers, we are creators, so we can adapt and enhance the environment as needed. We can sculpt the backdrop to bring out the best in the subject. In this video, we will explore how this can be achieved by adding some various elements to the scene and I show you how I sculpt the background by creating some extra depth and by planting some trees. Here you see an example of two beautiful small mushrooms. They're growing between some wonderful mosses and I want to shoot them at a low angle. In that way, it's possible to incorporate more layers into the scene to give it more depth. And for these two mushrooms, I wasn't able to frame it in front of an interesting background. When shooting the image at a low aperture, as I mostly do, then this background becomes quite flat and boring. There isn't anything to make it interesting. The light is quite dull, there's not much color variation or no supporting subjects. I tried different angles, but sometimes, like with this example here, you can't line up an interesting background. Now you have some choices. You can go and find other mushrooms to shoot, or you can shoot it just like it is. Another possible option might be to shoot the image at a smaller aperture, and in that way, there might be some interesting details that will pop up in the background. So I close down the aperture to f5.6, then to f10 or even to f16. But here for this example, I don't like the effect. It isn't a real improvement. The soft feel of the image gets lost and the background doesn't please me either. So for me, that's not a solution. So I decide to go for something different. I close down the aperture back to f2.8 and I'm going to add some extra elements to the scene. I'm going to create some extra depth into the scene. I start by putting some small pieces of moss in the left and right lower corner. I want them to be out of focus, creating an extra layer for the eye to cross when entering the scene. Next to the depth that they give, these mosses also break the flat line in the front part of the scene. Okay, now we have an extra layer but the background hasn't changed. Then I'm going to add some extra elements to this background. I start with a small piece of wood covered with moss and I place it left from the mushrooms. A small extra element to break up the background and to bring extra interest to the whole scene. Looks better already, but I want a little bit more. I'm going to find some twigs, not too big, but neither too small. And I want them to have some shape and if possible, a couple of branches. I prefer dark sticks as they will give the most pleasing result. I want to use them to create the illusion of trees in the background. So 
I put them in the ground behind the mushrooms. And I tend to let them lean over a little bit in the direction of the camera. And in that way, it's often possible to avoid most of the reflections that come from above. The twig that I put at the left is forked, and this increases the illusion of a tree. At the other side, I used two sticks, and I placed these two sticks in a way that the base appears wider than the top, just to create the illusion of a bigger tree. If the base has the same width as the top of the stick, then the illusion will be less powerful. It will be more obvious that it's just a stick at the back and not a real tree. So I went from this composition to this one. And I think it's a big improvement. Now for the final shot, I created a focus stack to get the whole mushrooms in focus while the background stays soft and dreamy. Just the effect that I wanted. Here's another solution that I created for the same two mushrooms. I did get in a little bit closer and I only added the mosses and the small piece of wood covered with moss. It's a more minimalistic image, but the mosses and the piece of wood really help to complete the scene. By getting in closer, the background became smaller, so I didn't need to fill in that much space. Also, with this result, I'm really, really pleased. Now, the area where these mushrooms are growing is frequently visited by some wild pigs. And they can really make a mess. And I found these pieces of wood covered with some lichens that they had turned off some bigger pieces of that wood. So I place it next to the two mushrooms. And I really, really like this result. A whole lot more interesting. And despite the fact that there's still a big open area, in this composition, it really works for me. And I'm really pleased with the result. Here's another setting with three small mushrooms. This is the first composition that I selected. With the mushrooms in front of a dark area and the circular highlight on the opposite side. Now, I played a little bit with it and I did put some extra elements like some autumn leaves, a small plant with leaves, some mosses and a branch in the background. But I wasn't really pleased with the effects. And then I placed a bigger branch almost in line with the mushrooms, so it's partly in focus, just at the edge of the frame. And then I placed some darker sticks at the back here and here. But I wasn't really pleased with the effect. The dark area behind the mushrooms was bothering me, so I didn't like the composition anymore. So I did change it just a little bit. And I started to play with some branches at the back. I searched for branches with some side branches. And you have to find the right balance. And you have to be careful where you put the branches. Right behind the mushrooms, like over here, really doesn't work. You don't want sticks or trees coming out of the head of the mushroom. And when searching for branches or sticks, I searched for irregular ones that had some character. Straight ones would have been less interesting. Now, I ended up by adding four branches. The one here up front, the one at the opposite side, and this little tree that I created is constructed by two branches. I lined them up behind each other, so it would only show one single stem. But in this way, I was able to create the illusion of a tree with some more branches. Here you see the overview of the whole scene. The small mushrooms in line with the big branch here up front. Some mosses in the front of this branch and also at the back to create layers. You can really see that the eye goes from the unfocused mosses in front to the stem that's almost in focus and then back to the unfocused mosses. So you really create layers in this manner. 
the other branches are positioned more to the back, but they are still quite close to the mushroom. I'm shooting this image at an aperture of f2.8, and this causes the branches to be out of focus, even if they are standing relatively close to the mushroom. Now, if I were to use a smaller aperture, they would become more in focus, and I would need to put them more backwards to get a similar effect as I do now. Here you can see that this illusionary tree that I created is built up by two small branches. I'm really, really pleased with the result. It really looks like three small mushrooms in a big forest. Just the look that I was aiming for. I really, really like it. When creating the illusion of trees at the background, you need to be careful where you place the sticks. I avoid to put them directly behind the mushroom. And I don't always put them straight, use angles, and try to find sticks or branches that have interesting curves or side branches. Now, sometimes the images don't benefit from extra elements that are added to the scene, like in this image here. Here, the more minimalistic look just works fine. Adding extra elements sometimes just ruins the image, like here in this shot that I took of some uh, cantorel mushrooms. The twig with the leaves that I added really, really ruins the image. It really differs from image to image, so experiment with it. Sometimes it will work out just fine, while in other occasions it's better to go for a more minimalistic look. And if you're able to incorporate real trees or mosses that are already present, or other elements that are already in the scene, then go for that option. It's still the most natural and easiest option. So that's how I build up some of my images. And as you might know, sometimes I take it a step further. Sometimes I let them glow. And if you want to join me on this journey into the Enchanted Forest, then have a look at my masterclass, Mushroom Light Painting Photography. And learn to look at the world through different eyes. Just click the link below for more info.